Yeah, it's recording. Okay. All right. Five. Wait, no, no. <laughs> okay, you can oh, count down. Five. You can count down. Oh, oh, you do it. It doesn't matter. And we're going live in five, four, three, two, one. That was that was a really quick count. <laughs> that was like. I don't know. Did you have coffee this morning? I did have coffee. That's why. That's why. Yes. You, had, you had an extra shot. There's no daying without the coffee, you know? No, I don't know because I don't drink it. Well, what's that? That is Wawa. Chai tea. Oh. Which is better than Starbucks, by the way. Is it? Yes, this is. This is. That's good to know. Watch this car. I see it. I see it. Um, That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But also, chai has just as much caffeine as coffee. Everybody thinks that, but it's not actually. Not That's not accurate? No. I mean, I don't know. No, no, no. So if you go to like get the pure like Indian chai, then yeah, it's gonna have a kick of caffeine. Oh, but not like this. No, not this Americanized stuff. stuff. No, yeah. no. <laughs> you know, because it's what's funny is I actually didn't start drinking coffee until I was pregnant. The first time or the second time? The first time, because I was so freaking tired huh. that like by the mid afternoon, and so I would have a cup of coffee every day, and then that started my addiction and really? now i can't get off of it really yeah oh man but i like it it's more like um i can't i've had times where i've gone off of it because then you know it's like i don't want to be a i don't want anything having its grip on me so yeah when i notice that then i'll like not drink coffee for like a month and it's really the ritual like that's the thing that ray and i do together in the mornings we make coffee it's like a whole thing oh there's it was actually something i was just listening to Oh man, it was like the keys to happiness. And it was talking about like the rituals that you have in the morning, right? Yeah. Like if it's like a 10 minute shower or a 20 minute shower or something like that, or a cup of tea or coffee or something like that. So I guess if y'all doing that, that adds to your happiness, right? Totally. And that, it's funny because I did it like last summer. I was on an anti-inflammatory diet or whatever. And so you, you don't have caffeine. And Ray was miserable because I it was like a he that that was the thing that he was upset about is because I I took away like the thing that we did together and I agree with him so I would like drink tea or whatever and that it was fine right. but that's why it's like oh this is really more about the ritual than it is even the consumption of the drug of caffeine oh my goodness that is like that's crazy because like I was listening to it and it's like oh we're, like you you hear it right like you hear it. It was on an Apple like podcast. Like I literally just listened to it yesterday. It was crazy. Yeah. And somebody, synergy. I think our friendship is synergies. We it is. Talk about it is. It is. Um, that was that was in there too. Like your friends, you know what I'm saying? And like if you can connect with them and things like that. Like it's some lady that teaches at Harvard, like the success to happiness. Now it's for college age students, so some things may or may not resonate. Yeah. But like overall. She was like hitting a lot of points. I'm like, dang. And then you talk about that this morning, the whole ritual thing. And it's like, because I think about like the mornings where I don't work out or don't run. Yeah, I'm a little off. Every time I'm down here, one of the rituals I like to do is I do like to get bagels. All right. Now, you telling me about hot bagels. I haven't been to hot bagels in a minute. Man, I have. Hot bagel versus hot bagel. Hot you can't bagel. live in South Jersey and be eating chain, chain bagels. No, I, I know. I know. But. It's been a while since I've been to Hot Bagel. I feel like there's a reason why I stopped going there. But we're going to roll in here now. All right. We're going to get this bagel. Okay. We're going to see what it's hitting for like. the review. Yes. Hot Bagels. If it sucks, I'll go buy you Manhattan Bagels around the corner. Uh, I'll just go and get some Jersey pizza. That'll solve it all. <laughs> okay. There has to be some kind of fetish website. For what? I'm just watching people eat food. There is. It's called... Oh, my goodness. It's called... Uh, Damn, Bukaki? No, no, oh, no. Oh, oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Wrong, wrong thing. <laughs> Mom, it's called, uh. This, just close your ears. Oh, my goodness. It's like an Asian thing, and people just sit there and eat. It's on YouTube. Well. What is it called? Like oh, ASMR mukbang. Stuff? What? It's called mukbang. It's very different than Bukaki. Yes, it is. It is. That was the first word that popped Don't into my Google head. Don't Google that. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna make money selling us eating bagels for an ASMR website. Mm-hmm. Muck muck. Muck muck. Only fans. Mm. I gotta I need diapers for my kids. <laughs> you know, so I'll do it. I'm not above it. 
Wait a minute, why? Wait, are you doing the OnlyFans if you like changing diapers? No, I gotta oh. make money. Oh, okay, money okay. I get you, I get you. I you saying. I was a little thrown out there, like, hold up, time out. I think that might be illegal. <laughs> make a buck. Mm. This guy's running and he's running with his dog. A husky, that's where I should get a husky. They're escape artists. Hmm. I know, I know. Out of your house. But I feel like it's more. It's more geared towards me, more energy for me, right? Like a, a dog that matches my energy, right? Yeah. Like, I guess. In order for like happiness, I guess back on the subject subject of happiness, right? So like, you in order to, with your dog. yeah, I got to vibe with my dog, right? Like I can't have like a, a dog that's sitting around all day not doing anything, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be like me having a relationship when I'm with a woman and she's sitting around all day not doing anything. It's not going to work. It's not going to work, you know. Yeah. But happiness, like, what do you, what do you, what are some things you feel like you need in order for, for happiness? Just me personally, or general human being happiness? I guess general, and then break it down. Give All me right. Allie's world of what she needs. I think to that be people, happy. Um, to be happy. Man, that's a loaded subject. Um, I had an us a three D design teacher professor in college and he would always say you know happiness is a questionable concept because I think it's happiness is so subjective but in yoga because I'm a yoga teacher yes yes um that's ultimately one of the it's like the ultimate reason why you would practice yoga and so happiness is not necessarily like like I'm happy I'm smiling all the time but really, like when I think of happiness, I think of joy. Like what brings us a base level contentment? You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, that those are the practices, the things that we have to commit to doing for ourselves. And choices, I think happiness is a choice. That's what I think. And I think that you can choose to do things that are in alignment with what matters to you. Happiness is a choice, okay. You know? and. I think you can choose to do things that are in alignment with what's important to you. Work, right? Like, you know, I'm, I'm in a thing right now where I'm, I'm thinking about leaving this new job that I got, right? Specifically because they're wasting my time, right? Like, I literally don't do anything all day long, mm -hmm. right? And so like... Uh, so they're wasting your time and their resources, human and capital. Yeah, like, I, you know what I mean? I have a, I have a specific set of skills that you hired me, that you paid me all this money for, right? But then you're like, oh, well, you're not certified to do this for us yet. Okay, so why don't I go to training? Well, then we'll get you there. Like, no, 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 don't get me here. Like, put me there now, I'm not doing anything, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't wanna hear this, you know what I mean? But anyway, time is a big thing, right? And I also don't work. Like, the crazy part is, is this new job, it, it's, it's like a paradox, right? Because like, I don't work too much either, right? Like, for all, even when I was in college, like, I didn't pull all nighters, right? If right. it wasn't studied by nine o'clock, it wasn't study. I'm not. Yeah. That's that's my time, like, you know. So I don't work overtime. I I shoot in the police department when I was in the police department. Like I didn't work overtime unless I was forced to, right? Unless mm -hmm. I had to. But like. But you also have a life, like the way that I see that you you have like a holistic view of your life. Mm -hmm. More on this in a second, but it's I think that's what we're experiencing post pandemic, like in the pseudo endemic endemic time, is like. Everyone's complaining about staffing shortages or whatever. I I don't know anybody who literally is just like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit around and watch TV. Like I don't know anybody that's I'm sure somebody's doing it. But yeah. I do think that we've got a cultural reshifting of priorities. And it occurs to me that you've had your priorities like oh, for work, years. work is yeah, and I'm like a workaholic, right? So anyway. It's you've got that life is more than just a paycheck. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and our culture, you know, it's we're experiencing one reckoning of dozens is our work culture and how we approach. I think people really had their their meaning and their purpose mm -hmm. wrapped up in their paycheck. They and did. I think that that's new for people that they're like, oh wait spending time with my family, going out into nature. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're like before, before the pandemic, I would always joke that like self-care is more than 
like the sheet mask aisle at Target. Like, you know, it's like <laughs> self-care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, here's a face mask. But really what self-care is, is just managing the areas of your life in equal balance. You know, we're, we're kind of always out of balance, but it's like, the question I love to ask myself is, here's a time question, is what is it now time for? One of my teachers uses that. And it's a way for me. I like that. Yeah, like, literally in the day-to-day -day, like managing my own schedule what is it now time for but then in a broader perspective of my life human beings our lives exist in seasons and so it's like oh yeah okay well six months ago it was totally fine that I was spending 15 hours a day working on this project you know, 15 hours whatever. a day Whew. I also, you know, that's, I got my that's own half of my work week right so. there. Well, good for you. <laughs> you doing it in a day, <laughs> you know, and it's or whatever. Like I'm putting all of my because I put my creative energy into my work. You right. also put your creative energy into different projects. Yeah, you know, so which I do spend a lot of time exactly. on. So yeah, yeah. So. so mine just happened to be kind of clumped together, but you know, and then it's oh yeah, and now we're moving into a season of making sure that I'm spending enough time with our daughters, right? And like, right. that's what it, and then come September, they'll be in school and it'll be time for something new. Right. But constantly asking myself that question of what is it now time for? We can't be all things to all people. We can't be great at everything. Over the span of our lifetime, we can master many things. And when we try to like um, spread thin our attention, we can't actually do that. We can only keep our like attention on one thing right you know right. so whether it's moving through the day okay good I said I'd do this and now it's time to switch gears and move into this or like seasonally in our lives acknowledging the end of a season and shifting into something new yeah oh that's that's actually a good like thing now I want to talk about too because like we was talking about you know my career as a police officer right like mm -hmm. we started to get into that but like shifting that was like I am. I mean, for I think for most people that know me, right? Like, when I make a decision, that's it, yeah. right? Like, I don't look back. It's not happening. I'm not going back, right? Like, we made the decision. It, it's happening. Get a roll with it, yeah. Right. Um, but I'm like, when I when I like, I, and I think what happened is because I left the police department and the military in the same time frame, right? Like, literally, military was January, police department was March, mm -hmm. right? But it was happening, right? And I was almost like, damn, I kind of want to go back because I felt so out of place, right? Like I felt lost. And I and, and I'm not and I'm gonna lie, for the first, you know, like month. What do they say? The prison you know is better than the freedom that you don't know. For yeah. People? Yeah, yeah. Actually, a good, very good line. But uh, like I was so lost, and I was like, I was unhappy. Like I everything that I planned out and mapped out, I mapped it out. I'm coming back east. I'm be with family. I'm be with friends. I'm be. You know, I'll, I'm, I'm working less, right? And I'm working less, you know what I mean? I have far more flexibility with the job I'm at now, which is like, wait, that's crazy because you have everything you wanted. But I got here, but it was like a huge piece of my life. Yeah. That so, was like- And how you identify, right? Yeah. Like I am Ron, I am in the military. I, I am, am a yeah. police officer. Yeah. yeah, and it was almost like that identity was stripped away from you. Another thing was like, coming out of my last name because I've been Davis for God knows how long right so everybody's like Davis 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 and so like people who like who knew me but weren't military started calling me Ronnie and I kind of just started going with that but then when I got out the military it's like and out of police department it's like all right my name is Ronnie right like it's Davis like no I'm no longer that like I am this is my identity right Ron AP or Davis because I remember I made a post on Instagram and I was like no longer Airman Davis or no longer Officer Davis right and it's like that I don't I don't I had to find out that I don't need that because like I always I never let that take over my life right right and because one thing I realized with the military and police department is that like some people these are just that's just their life right like so when they leave they're they're stuck so that that one month where I'm like yeah, god they're damn they're riding that train like till they die yeah for, for me it was a month like oh sh let me figure this out like what's going on with me for them it's literally like, well, I don't know what to do in life, right? But I set myself up in so many ways where I didn't work overtime at the police department. I don't care how much money I made, right? Um, in a, in a, the military, like, I didn't give them all of me, right? They took a lot out of me, but I didn't give them all of me, right? And I also built up 
different careers and different you know things that I can do outside. So when I left, it was like, okay, damn, let me figure it out. So now I'm back doing, I've been doing music, right? But but now it's like, oh, now I'm doing music and acting. I'm actually able to do my podcast again, right? Yes, it's like now it's the season of creativity. Now it's the season of like, yes, this is what you got out for. Now I'm actually just able to spend more time with family, friends. I mean, damn, we talk more often than, I don't know, we ever talk, right? So, you know what I mean? Um, and that was like, that was something that I didn't have out in Seattle, right? And yeah. then like, okay, look. I made almost out there, right? And I was not happy right. at all. I took a fifty thousand dollar pay cut. People, people are like you're crazy, right? Like you are crazy for that. Yeah, but what, how do you put a price tag on happiness? You don't. You, you don't. don't. You don't. Because like, regardless of how I feel about the current job that I'm in now, whether or not I'm going to leave it if they're wasting my time, I might be unhappy with that job, but I'm still happy right. in my life. Right. 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 So, and that becomes unshakable, right? So, like that's in yoga, you want to get to that place of we would say neutrality, where nothing that does or does or does not happen, it doesn't shake you from that base level line of contentment. Right. Like because we don't attach ourselves, to, or we try not to, but it's so human. It's in human nature to cling to things, titles, identities, mm -hmm. roles, money, especially. Um, having it or not having it um, but ultimately all of those things are meaningless if you don't have your own base line of contentment or happiness or joy yeah yeah you know and and there is no price tag on that you know like you can't put a price tag on that no and that and that's like a, a big thing and I see with people all the time right it's like they get in relationships they're unhappy with they're at jobs they're unhappy with they're and they're just like They'll, they'll be like, oh, but here's what people say to me, right? Because they think I'm crazy the way I the way I move, right? Because it's like, oh, nope, I don't like it. I'm out, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, uh, the only thing, obviously, the police department was like, that took some time. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And in the military, that took some time. was like, I am unhappy with this. But what happened is it just got to a point where they made me so angry that it was like, okay, decision mode now. Right? Yeah, and so, like, you, I think you start to see where as your season shift, if we're gonna stay with that analogy, right? You'll start to see where things will become into misalignment. And then we have to listen for, okay, that's showing up because I'm now moving into this new phase of myself, new iteration of self. Mm -hmm. And that, and it worked for you for a really good amount of time. You know, I've heard you say like so many lessons, you wouldn't be you if you didn't have that job with those specific lessons with yeah, those yeah. specific experiences yeah and i think that thing that people can do is they can curse the previous season yeah right? no no but i love reality I loved it. it's what made us you know i believe that like earth is a one-room schoolhouse i believe in like our spiritual assignment <laughs> you know and so that's so yoga that is so yoga of you to say <laughs> but i really do like i i there's nothing i look the traumas that I've incurred in my lifetime, the good things I've incurred in my lifetime, the experiences, like the unsavory stuff, I know that in some way that's um, ripened me in some way. It's mm -hmm. helped me see things in a, in a new way that I would be completely unwilling if I didn't go through the hellfire. Yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. I also, I don't believe that you need know, people are just wise, you know? Like I believe that adversity although I wish that upon no one, is the hellfire that makes, that's what gives us wisdom. Yes, yes. You know, so I think we can curse the experience of people and people do.